Hello everyone and uh, welcome to my presentation about history of Drupal. Uh, my name is Tamer Zobi and I'm coming from uh, Zagreb, Croatia. I'm CTO and co-founder of Web Solutions HR. It's uh, the largest Drupal shop in Croatia. Also we run the Drupal Creation Association in there for the local meetups and I'm also Drupalist. Uh, contributed to Drupal.org in my free time. Um, I'm usually not a loud speaker, so if you cannot hear me, just shout and I'll try to speak louder. Uh, basically today uh, we'll go uh, through these five sections. Uh, we'll, we'll see web before Drupal, we'll see how the Drupal <coughs> survived the massive changes in the web industry, then uh, why and how it was created, We'll take the tour through Drupal 1 to 8, with some looking on uh, key Drupal features and some important events, and then we'll see what future brings for Drupal. Basically, web before Drupal uh, looked like this. It was uh, in the early 90s we started to get first web pages online. They were mostly HTML with some images and maybe GIFs. And then in the mid 90s, we got CSS for styling and JavaScript for managing the Doom elements. And then uh, later in the 90s, Flash got uh, popular. And uh, around the same time, we started to see many uh, content management systems emerging, like Scoop, Vignette, or PHP Nuke. They're, they all got very popular at some point, but uh, today they are all obsolete. And Drupal has survived them all, so so how come it's uh, Drupal is still alive and others aren't? Well, when I was looking through the 15 years uh, history of Drupal's, um, I think it got four uh, main points, and those are the open source from its first version. Drupal is a GPL licensed, and this set cornerstone for the community we have today. Then it's the modularity. It introduced modules and hooks also from its very first release. Mm, those are like commonplace in uh, today platforms. It took concepts of nodes rather than uh, pages, where, uh, where we, we are starting to see recently that web starts to evolve less and less around pages, where we can have the node approach, which give us uh, opportunity to display uh, different content on a different devices. Mm -hmm. And then we have constant evolution and reinvention over the backward compatibility, meaning the Drupal also from the very early beginning uh, chose not to preserve the backward compatibility because that would require you to drag some like historical baggage and this would come at a significant cost. So it was chosen that we can break people code, but we cannot break the people's data. And basically, now you know why it's so hard to migrate from one major version to another in Drupal. And to see why and how Drupal was created, I, I would quote Dries, the founder, who said that uh, for me the history of Drupal is a chain of interesting surprises. And uh, First surprise began in uh, 1998 when this guy, see, at the time a Belgian student, he began constructing the local internet message boarding site so he could discuss uh, some technology news with his university friends. And after he left the university, he kept the discussions going by moving the internet site to the internet and he called it drop.org. And actually the story behind that was uh, a typo because he meant to register a domain uh, named Dorpje, which means village in Dutch, but he mistyped it and he got drop and actually it sounded fine, so he went with it. And later when he was naming his software, he back translated drop into Dutch, so he got Drupal, which sounded as Drupal in English. So like two days before the new year of 2000, uh, 
in this like legendary commit he baptized his software Drupal and he also added the GPL license to it so then uh, only after two release candidates on the 15th of January 2001st we got Drupal 1.0 it was mainly used for a news drive and or a portal sites it was storing uh, content in uh, stories and books and mainly it was written after some other popular message boarding systems like Splash and Scoop at the time. It also didn't have any menu router so you would access everything through a set of PHP files like admin PHP or account PHP. It was having this funny naming for guest users if they were called anonymous chicken. So also one of the important features that it had uh, was the database abstraction layer. Uh, at the moment it was uh, just supporting the MySQL table, but it should be straightforward to port it to other databases. And from its first version it had functions like um, DB query, DB fetch object, which we all know they are still used in Drupal 7. Uh, it, at the moment it didn't have the install script, it was coming with SQL dump, so you had to manually import it. And it had like 15 tables on. And you, when you would import that file, you would get this, your uh, very own first Drupal site. As you can see, it was a very basic with just few of the functionalities. And those functionalities were, uh, you had like, you could submit stories and diaries, you could have uh, accounts. Sorry? No, uh, no, there, you, you were in here. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, it's fine. Uh, so you could also have user logins, registrations, we had comments, search, there was a calendar, so you could reach the archive content. Uh, this is the sample of how entering the content looked in Drupal 1. There was no VZBG editor, it was very simple, just uh, few allowed HTML tags and also from the very first version Drupal uh, was modular uh, because Ryzen wanted to have the modular system so that other people could adjust it to its own needs and in the beginning the modules looked very primitive compared to today they were just uh, a single PHP file called dot module and it was located in the modules directory and basically if you would log in as an administrator you, you would be able to see all modules from here but as you can see there was no option to enable or disable the modules you, it was actually a manual process you had like um, to copy or delete them from the modules directory actually and in the first version there was like 18 core modules and as you can see in uh, the administration interface looked different than the client side interface because in first few versions Drupal had this separated so the administrator didn't really have any team it was just like a bunch of uh, configuration links uh, in the header and how modules worked well the idea was mm, to be able to run the random code at a given places in the engine and those places where you could run the code were called hooks and at the beginning this is the list of all Drupal 1 hooks there were just like seven of them and impressingly like three of those hooks are still used in Drupal 7 they're like hook uh, help, hook cron and uh, hook block so also from very first version Drupal had a theming system, so it tried to separate the, the backend from uh, frontend. Uh, so inside the theme, you could control the colors, the markup, the layout, and even the position of boxes or the blocks, as we call them today. And uh, as the modules, uh, the themes were also uh, very simple. That was just a single theme file, which you could place in a themes directory. And this theme file was just a, a PHP implementing a theme class which had um, 
like five functions like header and footer and then you would override those functions and output uh, your own HTML in there. So yeah, there, uh, like each user could change his own theme in the site preferences. There was no option to set it uh, like globally for all the users. And also, as we said, uh, from very first version, it was open source GPL license. So it Dries had the vision that every user should be and could be the contributor to the Drupal. And from the beginning, he made the instructions that uh, people should use diff and patch over directly committing to the repository because that makes uh, better content control. And uh, in the first version, the patches would be submitted to the email and in plain text uh, to the drives himself. So soon the community would grow. This is the, at the moment, the only Drupal 1 site that I know was running was drop.org. And soon the discussion about Drupal will, will start to take place in here. So then only after two months, we got Drupal 2, and that was like on 15th of March 2001. It added an important feature that was uh, translation. So it introduced the T function, which is still in use today. But however, adding the new language required you to manually edit the configuration file and to manually edit the table in, uh, inside the SQL. And you couldn't have the language switcher, so it was only like uh, one language at the time. And so from uh, other features that were added in Drupal 2, we got user access. It's still used, I think, until Drupal 8. Um, that was the permissions system. It added something that didn't uh, live long, that was the user ratings. They were quite popular in the early 2000s. Um, it added the sections for stories. Later, this will evolve in a taxonomy module. There were some rewrote of the existing modules like comments and discussions. And this is Drupal 2. And as we see, except for logo and maybe few links, nothing much changed on the, on the client side. And this is a sample how editing the user account from the admin side looks like. It's, as you can see, there are many fields. They have same name even in in Drupal 8 today. And this is a, a screenshot of uh, one of the Drupal sites. Now we, we start to see more and more uh, Drupal sites start to appear online. This, this was uh, globalgreens.org. Uh, and as you can see, at the beginning, they all looked very similar to drop.org. It was, there was no customized front page. It was just a list of no teasers, uh, and even they all had the, the same menu uh, links. It wasn't even possible to change it in the first versions of Drupal. It had these configurable boxes like calendar or, or sections. And this is uh, uh, the drop.org. Soon, like um, after Drys released Drupal, um, the discussion started to be more toward the Drupal instead of the about the news as, as he imagined his site would be. So soon he opened like a Drupal engine section of the site where you could find all the Drupal relevant information. This is um, just some statistics. There were like 22 core modules, two months in development. And then on 15th of sem uh, September, that, that was about six months in development. We got to Drupal 3, and in here Drupal introduced nodes. So now everything is based on nodes. Basically, in the first two versions of Drupal, it was using uh, stories and books to store the content. But soon as Drupal started to evolve, and it wasn't used anymore for just like a message boarding sites like Drop.org, we started to see more and more content like blogs and uh, forums and diaries and 
all, all of them, they had the same fields like title, author, date published, or other properties. And at the moment, like lots of code was uh, duplicated to, to make that happen. So since Drupal was already being modular, it makes sense to make a framework uh, for the content. And then the, the nodes were born around which all the content types would be uh, based. And this is the, the, the second uh, key uh, success point that we talked about because uh, it won't be until 10 years later that we see with the rise of mobile phones that the web started to evolve less and less around pages and it's more now about nodes where you can like use the content in a different way on a different devices. And when you would install Drupal 3, you would get uh, this. It's like a new logo. We got a new theme and we have some more links than in previous versions. And the admin side remained pretty much the same, but we got now the administer permissions page. Basically, you could add new roles and you could manage the permission for each role. Basically, this is the very same interface that we use even in today's Drupal to manage the permissions. And still we see some Drupal 3 sites at the time. This is like void style, some, somebody's blog. Still look uh, very similar in content. And then shortly after Drupal 3 got released, uh, Drys opened uh, Drupal.org. That was in April of, uh, um, sorry, it was in December of 2001st. Uh, basically, the discussion on Drop.org became overwhelming because everybody started to talk about Drupal. So he decided to open a separate site where, where the discussion will start to take place. And this is uh, some statistics some increase in number of core modules. And then Drupal was basically evolving quietly until 2002. That's when uh, Dries uh, initiated a relationship with Jeremy Andrews. Uh, Jeremy was the author of kernelcrap.org. It was a very popular Linux news site at the time. And it periodically go down because it had lots of traffic coming in. So Dries suggested him to switch from PHP Nuke to Drupal. And he did that. And on the February of that year, he, he launched his site on Drupal 3. And it was, uh, this relationship proved to be success. Not only Jeremy became one of the top Drupal contributors, uh, but um, he also reported uh, about his conversion to Drupal on, on his site. And as Dry said, uh, this report opened uh, eyes of many technical people uh, about Drupal. So now the Drupal is starting to gain more and more popularity with, with techies. So in the June of the same year, it's about nine months of development. We got <coughs> Drupal 4. Now we started to see more and more major sites running on Drupal. We also get more contributors from Europe and from the US. So it starts to become more of an international uh, open source project. And then Drupal 4, when you would install it, it's still um, a similar theme. We got new logo, it's now 3D logo type and some more links. There was also footer added, but it's not visible here. And then the big change in Drupal 4 uh, was the introduction of taxonomy. That was a hierarchical tagging system. Uh, so basically, until now, Drupal was using the meta module and it had like meta tags and attributes. And it was like classifying the content like in child parent relationship, but those relationships wouldn't be used in a proper way. So there was actually a, a huge discussion on Drupal.org and then the community actually built the taxonomy module. And basically it was working uh, with the concept of having a global uh, 
uh, vocabulary that you could create new vocabularies for storing the tags and then you, you could be able to bookmark on each uh, node uh, to which tag uh, this node will belong and it was all uh, hierarchical and it was I think at this point that Drupal started to look more like uh, an enterprise uh, content management system. This is a sample how, how basically creating a new vocabulary looks like. Basically, uh, you would have to choose on which types of node you can apply this vocabulary. Uh, it was used, I think, for Drupal 6. Then in Drupal 7, it was replaced with the term reference module. And this is the adding the new content in Drupal 4. Now we starting to get some more and more options. Uh, as you see uh, down there, we got the revisions. That was also an important feature of Drupal 4. Um, we also have the teaser. We can put the navigation link, which is something like a main menu. And we also have the properties like published, unpublished, or promoted to front page. And basically, the, the similar properties, we are st st still seeing them today, in, even in Drupal 8. Mm, and also a big change in Drupal 4 is that now you are able to um, enable or disable the modules directly from the user interface. So no more manually copy or deleting them from the directory. And also Drupal 4 introduced some concepts that uh, didn't live long. And there was like this uh, authentication system based on Jabber or Yahoo logins. Uh, it never really lived up as it was hoped to. It also had the Blogger API support that was like silently removed as of Drupal 7. It had the notification to web blogs. It never lived that long. And then with Drupal 4, it was decided to to have like a minor version of like 4.1, 4.2. Each one had uh, new features. So it was actually like a major release. So on the February 2003, we got the Drupal 4.1. It introduced the profile module. So now you could extend the registration page, you could add like address field or phone numbers to the to the registration form. However, it was kind of hard coded, so you couldn't add the new fields from the interface. It was like through the module. We are also seeing like first theming functions. Uh, they were called like theme invoke. Later they will evolve and become the theme function, which is still in use today. And we got some um, other improvements to the forums and comments and etc. And also Drupal 4.1, it had some concepts that didn't live. The, it removed the rating module, which was added in Drupal 2. Um, it added the Trotter module. That was uh, the module that Jeremy wrote for the kernelcrap.org. It was actually an auto throttle congestion control. So basically you could set uh, your site to disable images or blocks or modules in, in site in the case that uh, it gets too busy like in terms of traffic or users. So as of Drupal 7, it was like actually removed from the core because I think today there are like far better solutions like um, caching or, I, I, or even the servers are much uh, more powerful than they were 10 years ago. So this feature, I don't think that somebody would disable images today on his site or something. So then after another six months, we got new Drupal. It now had clean URLs as we know them today. And we are getting to see the first idea toward some sort of menu router in Drupal. Uh, basically, now we don't have individual PHP files like admin PHP or account PHP. Now everything goes through index PHP and it introduced like a queue parameter. And then this parameter was called hook page. So basically, each module was implementing 
his own uh, routing inside that hook. So for example, now you could access nodes through like node slash view slash node ID, and that would call like a node page function with two parameters. One would be view and um, another one would be node ID. And then that module would know what to do uh, and what kind of output to return. And for example, before this, it had this kind of URL. It was like node PHP and then bunch of like ugly parameters. And from other features, we are starting to see support of, for the Visavig editors. We also got support for Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, so basically, at the moment, Drupal here was supporting like three databases layers. That was like MySQL, PG SQL, and now Microsoft. So it was actually still coming with three database dumps. And it was at this time that people started to discuss about automating this process and to start making the, um, an installation script. So eventually, in later versions of Drupal, we'll, we'll have the install script as we know it today. We also got Node API, so we can better integrate the nodes. I think if anybody worked with Drupal 6, this was like highly used. Later it was replaced with hook entity operation hooks. We are starting to see uh, X template. This was like a, a theming template, which started to replace the, the custom made theme class that was used for the Drupal themes. Later, this six template it will be replaced by PHP template, and then uh, during the same year in the summer of 2003, uh, the, the the interest in Drupal got like a really significant boost when uh, when it helped build a Dean space that was a promotional website for Howard Dean. He was one of the 2004 US presidential candidates. Uh, basically, Dean Space was something like a Drupal distribution. It was like a pre-installed set of modules and content, which then uh, supporters could download and install to, to have their own version of the Dean site for uh, promoting his campaign. And basically, as, as this campaign started to growing up, we saw like a huge increase of uh, people and activity on Drupal.org, like in terms of documentation and modules. And this was the Dean Space website from uh, 2004. As you see, it remained in the footer like build on Drupal. So basically, this was the first time when many of people heard about the Drupal. So eventually, in the summer of 2004, the Howard Dean didn't get elected and it was pronounced that this project was dead. However, there was n at now at the time many uh, Drupal developers that were working on this. So they started to turn Drupal into like some other applications like for NGO or similar. And then one of them was uh, a civic space. So eventually the same developers that work on civic space will work with Drupal developers uh, to promote the idea of having Drupal distributions officially so that they wouldn't need to fork Drupal and modules and maintain it in a separate branch. And this will eventually happen with Drupal 5. And in the meantime, the Drupal was uh, struggling between four point something versions. So we got, an, only after three months of development, we got another version, which now had like path module for URL aliases. It's still used in Drupal 8. We got important database prefixing, so you could basically install uh, multiple Drupal sites on one database, which is important for the shared hosting where you cannot have more than one database. And it will do some minor things like breadcrumbs and mass node operations. And then Drupal 4.4, it added the file API, so now you could finally start uploading the documents as attachments added the field sets as we know them today and now we are starting to see the better team functions in Drupal so now everything that's teamable is being outputted through team underscore functions uh, 
uh, and this uh, directly improved the mobility where other modules could extend uh, output of other modules. And it's still the, the same, very same fun functions are used in even today. And also as, um, as number of contributors started to grow, we are starting to see more and more advanced modules. So the, one of them was the e-commerce module. This was actually a whole set of sub-modules which would turn your Drupal 4 site into a full e-commerce application. Then after another seven months, we are getting Drupal 4, 5. And now uh, we have like configurable menus. Also very important, the hook menu is born. So now uh, every module is actually defining his own paths. This is something like basically a menu router in Drupal. It's, it was used until Drupal 8. Now it's uh, being replaced by a Symfony router. It also introduced the tape-based user interface, which uh, I'll show in shortly, which is basically the look and feel of Drupal that we all know today. And it, it made possible to add like multiple user roles and some other minor things. And also one big improvement was that finally, like since Drupal 2, we are seeing like major improvements on the translation. So basically now you could manage the translations uh, through the user interface. So you could like start to add languages, you could have multiple languages, there was the language switcher, so now you could really have a multilingual site, starting to support the getx files, so you can import and export strings for the translation. And as we see up there, it's, we are starting to get this uh, tab interface. And this is now how the admin user interface is uh, looking like. It's basically now the admin and the client side of the application is, uh, is looking the same. They're not using the separate team anymore. So then we got first Drupal conference in the February of 2005. Uh, this happened in Antwerp in Belgium. It, it's now known as a first DrupalCon. Basically there were like only 15 attendees and usually because the internet connection would be bad, people would download the whole Drupal contributed repository with them and then come on the conference and work offline. This is like today maybe impossible with 30,000 modules and more. And now we are, we are seeing that the community is growing and there are more Drupal cons and sprints organized. And then Drupal 4.6, it started to support PHP 5. Uh, now you could have like multiple sites installed on a single code base. Uh, we are getting also the image API for managing, uh, resizing and cropping of the images. And now some more famous uh, projects are starting to use Drupal. This is the NASA, they, they were using it for one of their uh, projects. And then Drupal 4.7, it actually took uh, quite a bit to develop, I think around a little bit more than a year. And at the time there was already more than 55,000 Drupal sites online. There were more than 300 contributed modules in the repository. And we get more and more contributors and patches uh, working on this Drupal. And also in 2006, the views contributed module was born. Uh, basically, it's one of them. It will become one of the most popular Drupal modules. Now with the Drupal 8, it's included in the core. Then Drupal 4.7, it got lots of JavaScript and Ajax, uh, which was still relatively new technology at the time. It also reworked the Forms API. So basically now you could like alter and extend any form in Drupal. This is very similar to what we have today. But however, it, uh, this frustrated many users on Drupal.org because this new uh, API brought like hundreds of contributed modules and it ended up that it was a real pain to update them and people were uh, late. 
in their work, but eventually they see that the payout was huge because this new form API was much better and flexible. And this is the fourth key success point that I mentioned. This is the constant evolution and reinvention over the backwards compatibility. And also there were some module improvements. You could install, uh, uh, each module could now install uh, its own database table. So now we got the install file as we know it today. Um, and there were some big team improvements. There was the Adrian Rousseau, who specifically for Drupal, he brought PHP template system. So basically the X template engine was removed and all the core teams are ported to the PHP template. And it was using like individual TPL PHP files to mm -hmm. team the Drupal team underscore functions. And it was great if you know a little bit of PHP, you could make a really advanced uh, layouts. And eventually the PHP template will now be replaced in Drupal 8 with a better one, which is a tweak. And now we are starting to see more and more popular sites using Drupal. Now we have MTD, Co UK, PlayStation Asia, Hillary Clinton. And they're all now on Drupal. And this is Drupal 4 in numbers. We got more contributed modules, sorry, con four modules. And in total, it took uh, over 50 months to, for all Drupal 4 releases. And then on uh, 15 of January 2007, this was actually Drupal 6 birthday. We are getting Drupal 5.0 uh, released. Uh, Drupal 4 was released back in 2002, and then the community felt ready to move to a next major version, so they decided to have 5.0 release and it had like a record number of contributors and patches and over 2,000 contributed modules. So it introduced the web-based installer, so no more manually importing the SQL files. Uh, it reorganized the modules, so now each module is not anymore a single PHP file, it has its own directory. It has its own install files, info files, uh, CSS and JavaScript and other includes. And now we separated the contrib modules. They go now to sites all directory and in the modules only the modules, uh, the core modules will remain. Also with the introduction of info files, uh, we are getting the module dependencies. And this was very important because uh, now each module could build a small uh, part of functionality, and then together they would build a feature, which is better uh, than having a module building the whole feature, which is something like, I don't know, plugins in WordPress have, which can bring uh, incompatibility between different modules. Also, it has uh, more cache backends, so you don't need to use the database caching. Now there is like other like memcache or file caching. We are getting the jQuery in core. The Drupal was a, a very early adapter of jQuery. Today it's uh, basically used on over 60% of top million sites. Um, we also got custom content types and you could create your own additional content types. Um, and we added the support for Drupal distributions as we mentioned earlier, uh, now basically they're like ready-made downloadable packages of preset modules and content. And then from team improvements, we got Garland, it's a new default team. Uh, it's still my favorite, even Drupal 7. There was a, this color module, but I don't think it was ever used that much. Uh, we also got CSS caching, which greatly increased the, the speed of your site. And this is now how Drupal 5 starts to look like. Basically, it's more like uh, a modern day Drupal as we know it today. And now with this release, uh, we are getting more and more Fortune 500 companies on Drupal. We have like Warner Bros, 
Xbox, Yahoo, Open Office, and etc. You are seeing some increase in number of core modules in here. And then Drupal 6. It took 13 months to develop. It was released in February of 2008. And actually, it was it reached end of life recently. That was on 24 of February this year. So that means if you still run on Drupal 6, there won't be any more security update. So it's it's time to start migrating to a new new version of Drupal. Still, there are like estimated of 120,000 Drupal sites online today, and in total there were like 7,000 contributed modules, six, over 600 custom themes in the repository. It introduced lots of new features like better installer. We got drag and drop administration so you could move the uh, menus and taxonomies and blocks. Uh, we got Drupal menu system was rewritten from scratch so it became much more faster. And it got improved security. We got update module so you would be notified when there is a security release. And there was a security announcement email list on Drupal.org where all you can still subscribe today and get uh, the latest information about new security releases. And soon after, on October, the White House goes Drupal. And basically, it was a huge milestone because in, in terms of security, because now Drupal are starting to rely that people are starting to rely that Drupal is more secure because White House made a strict security audit before choosing the CMS for the, for their own website. So basically, some statistics for Drupal 6. We got over 30 core modules now, and it took a bit more than a year to develop. And then, uh, almost 10 years after we got Drupal 1, uh, Drupal 7 is released. Now it's uh, used to build any kind of website, like from blogs, from micro sites, to the full enterprise level CMS systems. At the moment it has more than 11,000 modules and 600 themes and over 200 distributions in the repository. And the big change in here is that now everything is an entity. So not only the content types, now we have taxonomy, users and you can create uh, additional custom entity types meaning you can add all of those fields and displays basically to anything in Drupal 7. It's now all about the web applications uh, like uh, for example I, I'll give uh, the GoSend. Um, this is one of the largest projects that we are working on it. 